Hey everyone, today I will talk about how to use AI in your next email marketing campaign and as you will see, unlike many YouTube videos, I will go through not only copywriting or not only the technical segmentation and data analysis type of things or, or only design, but actually I will cover all of them. So this is a presentation that I gave at a conference in uh, here in Europe recently at the Inorbit conference and uh, I got a tons of questions from different people. So I think this is very pretty much a hot topic. So let's dive into this. So how to use AI for your next email campaign. So basically the main applications of uh, AI um, in my team is uh, copywriting, design, so basically creatives, and then data interpretation, and thirdly, it's segmentation, which is uh, strongly tied to data as well. So first of all, here's the right mindset about AI when, it, uh, when you use it for creatives. First, uh, you must know the objective and the strategy. So basically, if you behave like a headless chicken, then it doesn't matter how much you use AI and how much you can uh, you know, optimize processes or scale things. End of the day, you are still a headless chicken um, and you just don't know where you go. So you really want to set the objective and have the strategy because I think that's a more complex uh, problem and challenge. So we need humans for that. And first of all, you need this. Second, everyone becomes a manager when it comes to AI because we have to give instructions, prompts. So even the lower level employee uh, becomes a uh, manager when it comes to AI because that person needs to give the right instructions, uh, must be a good manager. Basically, you can get many things from AI, but if you don't give the right instructions, then it's all in vain and uh, it won't give you the right uh, outcome. Number uh, three, a human is needed at the beginning and at the end of the process. This is what we see. So this is for true for uh, copywriting, for design, and even for video creation. So at the beginning, we need someone because we, we really want to set the objective, the strategy, but also really just set the direction what we want to achieve and provide the prompts. And we also need someone at the end of the process because uh, we need someone who understands what high quality means in this task for, yeah, for this task and uh, somebody who is able to judge the quality of the outcome provided by AI. So we need someone at the beginning and at the end of the process. Uh, AI won't solve everything. You must be able to judge the work of AI if it's high or low quality. So this is why we need someone. So the first field where we use AI is copywriting. And I know there are many tools out there, copywriting tools like VSL.ai is a good one, but uh, we still use 90% of the time actually ChatGPT. Um, and yeah, it really does the job. So in my experience, how we can use AI uh, copywriting and ChatGPT Number one is research. So if you've ever done a uh, copy, a piece of marketing copy, then you know that actually the research, it takes as much time as writing or many cases even more. So once you have your ideas and uh, the research is done uh, properly, then actually it's, uh, it takes less time to write the actual copy. Um, so, so yeah, I think you will understand this as a copywriter. And uh, actually AI can help you with research. The newest version, it's even uh, real time. So you can actually find, uh, you know, links and, uh, and uh, important uh, scientific researches and findings if you wish. So all of that. But yeah, research is a big thing that it can really help you. It's easier than using Google or, you know, other tools. So yeah, research is a big one. Number two would be summarizing content. So we, for example, we copy paste the reviews of a product of, or, uh, you know, uh, a page or a collection. You can use it not only on Shopify or your e-commerce platform, but Amazon. You can use it for competitors. And basically you copy paste it to uh, ChatGPT and you ask it to summarize it. And one more thing that we regularly do with our clients, we actually ask ChatGPT to build a buyer persona 
or multiple buying buyer personas based on those reviews. So it's really smart. It actually builds a, the profile of a real human person based on these reviews. Uh, the other one could be fake personality. So you can use it to write in a style of, I don't know, Elon Musk or Joe Biden or whatever, different uh, celebrities. Obviously, if somebody has more content on the internet, it can uh, do a better job to, to fake it. Uh, and then the last one is generate subject lines, hooks and CTAs. I really like this one because uh, as OGLV said, once you write your headline, you spend 80 cents of your $1, which is spent on advertising. So headline is 80% of your copy, of your marketing copy. And uh, it has a huge importance and it's not easy to come up with a good one. So ChatGPT can uh, come up with some good ideas, especially when you have that creative fatigue and burnout. So that's super helpful. Um, you need a person at the beginning, at the end of the process, as I said, and uh, you can either provide short, more conversational prompts where you give short prompts, you see the result and then you iterate with another short prompt, or you can uh, come up with templates, long prompts that you just use once and uh, you have, if you have well vetted long prompts, actually it can make your, uh, your uh, job very fast and very efficient. But I think if you do something new, it's better to use these short prompts and iterate uh, to get to the uh, perfect outcome that you wish for. So yeah, if you are just starting out, I would uh, start with short conversational prompts. And if you already know what you do and you did it many times, then longer templated prompts can, can be good as well. <clears throat> so in my team, uh, this is managed by strategists and sometimes copywriters. We have really solid uh, success managers who manage the whole email marketing and Google ad uh, strategy of the client and they are able to actually create good copy with AI without a copywriter, which is a very important skill as a marketer in my opinion. Uh, and for QAing, we typically use another person. So actually two people checks the quality, the typos and everything that comes out of AI. So <clears throat> here's a uh, result of a campaign or uh, not just one, but actually quite many campaigns. So basically here we can see that we sent out these campaigns and uh, one variation was with a copywriter and the other one was with AI. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, the B variation is AI. And we can see which one was the winning variation. So keep in mind that, uh, that the click rate is the important one because the email copy was, uh, was created by AI. And basically what we can see here is that regardless who is the copywriter, in most cases it was either uh, the AI was the winner or uh, it was a strong uh, tie. So actually even with our vetted copywriters and some of them they've been doing this for almost 10 years copywriting. So I know it sounds bragging but I really believe we have amazing copywriters. So <clears throat> so uh, AI can really, um, uh, you know, it can really uh, give same quality of copy what a human copywriter can. And when it comes to revenue, we can see almost no difference between the numbers, which is, uh, which is amazing. One more thing though, is that as you can see, most of them are uh, sales emails. Um, yeah, most of them, but there are content emails as well. In our experience, AI works better for sales emails and promo emails and uh, simply because those can be templatized much more because you know the structure is quite similar every single time like there is a uh, coupon code there is a product to be promoted there is an urgency why content is something more complex so I think that's still a better fit for human copywriters. Okay, so copywriting formulas, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but if you are a copywriter, you will understand that uh, it's a great 
best practice to use copywriting formulas to write your copy, your marketing copy. And uh, you can actually explain this to AI, to ChatGPT, that please use the BAB, the before after bridge methodology for this landing page copy or for this email copy. Or use the PPPP, meaning promise, picture, proof and push. Please look it up on the internet and use this uh, analogy for this uh, product to be promoted for Black Friday. So yeah, this is super helpful and uh, these formulas are uh, really the best ones uh, what you can use for your copy. Okay, so now I will skip to design and uh, again regarding tools I don't get into you know hundreds of different tools that's not the point here. I rather want to focus on the way of thinking. So <clears throat> we <clears throat> use mid journey and uh, <clears throat> how we use it. So hero images in emails uh, or images that are less specific. So it doesn't have the product. It doesn't have super uh, detailed human faces and their fingers because as we know, AI still has issues with fingers. Mid journey, it has many limitations. Uh, and that's why we actually don't use this as much. But here's an example. So uh, here in your prompt, you want to be super specific. So you want to define as much details, as many details as possible. And my favorite is that we simply tell AI what camera to use, what's the lens size, so 70 millimeters, and a black Nike t-shirt, Adidas running shoes, um, Honestly, I don't think it did a great job because we just kind of recognize those things. So, so yeah, the golden hour is actually there. So yeah, mid journey does the job and it's free, but, uh, yeah, we use other tools uh, if we want to have more specific things. So my favorite is still boost.ai and uh, we can use it for hero images, showing people, we can change models and uh, we can show product uh, specific images. So what this tool can do is that it connects with your Shopify store. It can pull in your products, your SKUs uh, into its system and it can uh, put your product on, uh, on your AI models um, in a great way. So it will be actually your product. That's a huge benefit. It's amazing for fashion, for footwear, for furniture, for beauty. And the other thing is that you can change your models. So if you want, you can specify that, okay, I want a female who is Asian. I want a, uh, I don't know, a black male and so on and so forth. So you can really specify this and that's amazing. So you don't have to take those expensive photo shots anymore. And uh, here you can see an example. So the guy on the left, he's real, but the girl on the right, she's not real. And uh, we made a case study with Boost.ai together because actually we ran a A-B test, multiple A-B tests. And as you can see, the AI banner with this uh, AI lady, she generated more than 1% click-through and uh, $3.4,000 revenue, while the real model, he generated uh, a lower click-through rate and the revenue is only 1.13K. So that is a three times difference. Of course, I don't say it's only because of the AI model, but you get the point. Um, and I didn't mention, but we also use the AI tools of Photoshop. So it can fill out backgrounds. It can add objects on an image. So it has also has uh, some great features that designers, they can use it. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a great tool what you find in photo, uh, Photoshop. Okay, so after the creatives, now I will focus on um, different analytical tools and segmentation. So predictive analytics in Clavio. And uh, this can be found in many different email tools nowadays, but I'm the most, uh, I'm the most uh, advanced with Clavio, let's say. I've been using this for many years now. So yeah, I will use Clavio as the prime example of uh, AI and predictive analytics, how you can use it in your email marketing effort. So before we jump into the different tools, there are a few environments of using predictive analytics 
uh, for your email marketing. So you need minimum 500 orders historically. You want minimum three orders, three orders per customer as the average. Actually, this excludes uh, quite many e-commerce businesses, uh, esp new, especially newer businesses. And uh, finally, you want to have at least six or ideally even uh, 12 months of uh, order history. So machine learning, it can really kick in and see the data. And one main limitation here is that it cannot see major trends or black swan events such as COVID or I don't know, hurricane happening or you know anything like that. So keep that in mind. You can use it for segmentation, first of all. So if you go to uh, segmentation that you will see that uh, there are many different ways how you can use it. So you can uh, pick the total customer lifetime value, you can uh, pick the historic customer lifetime value and the predicted customer lifetime value. So what these mean is that uh, the total means how much money a customer on the average spends with your store during their lifetime. And it uh, consists two parts. One is how much this person has spent up to today, uh, which is the historic one. And the predicted is how much money this guy will spend in the future expectedly. So uh, the other thing is predicted number of orders in the future and then average order value, average day between orders. And the last thing is predicted gender, what I will talk about in a minute. So. Yeah, predictive gender, what this means is that you can go to Clavio and tell uh, and you can say that, okay, I want to predict who is a female most likely and who is a male most likely. So basically this, uh, this works using uh, names and uh, email addresses and according to Clavio it has a 99.5% accuracy. So I, I, I really think that's quite accurate and uh, in my experience it is. So if you create these segments, you check the name they will be all female or male and uh, you can send them the right message. One prime example where it's useful, so if you are in a fashion, then uh, you don't want to ask people in a pop-up when they sign up that uh, if they are male or female, but rather you can just use this segmentation, you save one question, so you will get more uh, subscribers in your sign up forms and you can just do this segmentation yourself uh, when you send a campaign out. Okay, so besides segmentation, how you can use predictive analytics? So my uh, one of my favorite examples is the add or no flow, which means estimated date of next order. So basically here we go into Clavio and we set up this date based trigger and uh, basically machine learning can tell you when is someone is the most likely to buy from you again, the most likely date when they buy from you again. And uh, you can specify this date and you can ask Clavio to send an email a couple days before. Here it says two days before and you just uh, send them a text message or an email and you just really push them uh, through the fence. So I think that's super uh, useful and uh, you can use this. I wouldn't use this too much so you don't want to do this every single time when somebody is likely to purchase, but uh, it can really help you again, push those people to really buy from you again. So yeah, this is great for consumables uh, where people they buy quite often. This is the data points. These are the data points what Clavio use. So purchase history, that's very obvious. Website behavior, what pages they visited, uh, how long uh, they uh, were on each page and whether they added items to their cart, uh, email engagement. So all of these data points, is, is they are used by uh, Clavio. It targets highly potential customers a few days before. So yeah, that's super valuable and you want to use this differently than your VIP customer or returning customer flow. So the best way to use it is uh, you send it to first time customers who already purchased once 
and uh, when you expect them to buy again or for the third time basically so if they buy for the tenth time probably it's better to target them with a VIP customer flow uh, you don't want to send it again and again to potential returning buyers because it just becomes annoying after a while okay so what other metrics we can get so you could already see that it can calculate the future customer lifetime value and the total if we add the historic uh, lifetime value it can tell you the churn risk prediction so it tells you what the what's the probability that somebody will never buy from you again as a percentage and then also the average time between orders which uh, ideally is uh, pushed down as a number so one of the major targets for a larger brand if somebody already purchased once then they really try to uh, push them to buy again for the second time as fast as possible and if they can reduce this number from two months to two weeks that's a huge achievement for a brand it, can, it really increases the lifetime value uh, what they get um, and they get that value faster so this is how it looks like inside Clavio. Uh, and i really like this visual representation so yeah this is the date of the first purchase this is today and this is the historic clv so 700 dollars spent across six orders um, and then predicted is that they will spend uh, almost 200 uh, USD in the future actually in the next one year so it, they even tell you the time frame which will mean 1.41 orders basically so somewhere between one or two orders this is the total CLV and uh, churn risk prediction so there is a 31 percent chance that actually this guy will never buy from us again average time between orders is 159 days and average order value is also here and uh, here's another application of predictive analytics in Clavio. so smart send time basically it predicts the best time to send your email and uh, for long 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 years for marketers it was a question when is the best time to send my email and uh, you know there were all of those best practices that 8 a.m in the morning 4 p.m in the afternoon or uh, even in the evening or at night but honestly that was just wild guessing but here we have machine learning and AI and it can give you a much better answer so in order to use this you want to have at least uh, 12,000 recipients for your email campaign and you want to schedule your uh, email campaign and pick smart send time um, and then you want to pick uh, send time uh, exploratory and spread over 24 hours so basically what this means is that you schedule your email campaign and the email campaign will be sent out to your uh, segment across 24 hours and if you have let's say I don't know 24,000 uh, people subscribers in your segment then each hour there will, there will be sent 1,000 uh, emails so this is adds up to 24,000 subscribers in 24 hours who will be emailed make sure that you don't use it for a time sensitive email campaign so don't do this in black friday or, or halloween time you know you want to use it on uh, campaigns where uh, if there is a 24 hour delay that's still okay for uh, some subscribers and you can see here in this small spreadsheet that uh, if you have more than 72,000 subscribers in that particular campaign you need only one campaign to be sent if you have less then you will need to repeat this a few times but what happens Clavio gathers the data and it will tell you what's the best time to send email campaigns and then you can pick two other options after a while once you ran enough uh, campaigns so one is focus send where uh, you will send around the best time of the day but it's still a longer time frame um, around the most effective hour that you found and then there is an optimal send when the email is sent to subscribers at the best time of the day in their local time zone so this is also uh, available after a few send and you will see in a graph what's the best time of the day to email your uh, email subscribers 
So these are the best use cases, how you can use predictive analytics, aka AI and machine learning in Klaviyo. So besides smart send time, you can uh, use the estimated date of next order flow. You can use all the profile metrics. You can predict their gender. You can predict the uh, lifetime value that you can expect from them in the future. And you can use this for segmentation. So all of these are super helpful in uh, Klaviyo. You can use AI, all of those tools I showed you for copywriting and uh, for design. So you can really level up your creative team by doing this as well. And then, you know, good data and data driven decisions, they meet with great creatives. I think that's really ends up in a great marketing and a lot of conversions. So I wish you great success with uh, AI tools. Thanks for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed and even more importantly, you learned a lot from this video. Here at Budai Media, our goal is to help at least 1000 e-commerce businesses grow with high quality marketing because we can see too much shit out there. If you like this video, make sure that you go down, you subscribe to this channel and also hit the notification bell so you get updated of my weekly videos. We collected the top 100 email templates from the past six years and these generated tens of thousands of dollars for our clients. So go down and click the link and get this uh, 100 templates for free. And finally, I will drop you one more video here. Make sure that you check it out as well.